everybody, welcome to the training video. My name is Christopher Sicari with the Alaska Division of Agriculture and I am the State Survey Coordinator for CAPS and PPA programs. This year I will be your cooperator for the Asian Gypsy Moth season. Um, the purpose of this video is to give you an overview of new things in the program like the ArcGIS collector application and how we're going to use that to streamline our data collection and exportation and come together as a team to make this as good as it can be. A brief overview of the Gypsy Moth program in Alaska. We've been getting money to do this work since 2003 from USDA APHIS um, and we're going to continue that legacy. As you know, the purpose is to stop the establishment of invasive defoliating moth species. That's Asian gypsy moth, European gypsy moth, nun moth, rosy moth, and Siberian silk moth. Specific to you guys is gonna be Asian gypsy moth and European gypsy moth in your areas. All right, so another aspect of the training that we're going to be talking about today is the ArcGIS collector application. You should have received an invitation to the AKAG and CES AGM 2021 group. Once you've accepted that group invitation, you'll be able to see the mapping for this upcoming season. When you pull up your collector application, you'll see groups. You'll go ahead and go into our group. You see offline mapping areas. Offline mapping areas are very important if you're not familiar. You're going to want to download the area that's specific to where you're trapping prior to heading into the field. That'll help mitigate any issues related to lack of cell phone service and things of that nature with live mapping. Um, another aspect of that is you're going to want to sync your data points every evening after you're done trapping for the day, placing traps, retrieving traps, doing mid-season trap checks, because if you let that data go all season and then try to sync it, it either won't sync or it's going to take days to do so because it's going to be a lot of data based on the points that you're collecting. So once you get your offline portion downloaded, you're going to want to go click into it. You're going to add a point. Once you hit add a point, you're going to want to adjust this GPS point to make sure it's as accurate to where the trap is actually placed as it can be. You have a margin of error and depending on the receiver in your device it might be pretty good. Um, the Apple tablet will tell you it's pretty accurate and you'll go back to collect the trap and you'll be at 100 meters off or so. So you're going to want to make sure that that's as accurate as possible. After you place a point on the map you can't adjust it an infinite number of times. So once these fillable fields come up you're going to have your trap type, your trap number, trap check mid-season, mid-season date if applicable, mid-season replaced, yes or no. Um, for the trap type this season, you're going to be using Delta Orange. Once you put it in there much, once, it should come up each time so you don't have to type it in there. The trap number will be on a label found on your trap. Obviously, did you check it mid-season? Yes or no, that's self-explanatory. Mid-season check date, also self-explanatory. If you had to replace it when you came back for mid-season trap check, put a note in there as to why you think. You know, I found it on the ground, it was crushed. It looks like the wind ripped it off the tree, things of that nature. You can also put any notes that you feel are necessary for me to have or for you to have during your field season in any one of these fillable sections. It's not a big deal. The other very important aspect of this is to take a photo. For every trap that you place, you're going to take a photo of it. And I don't mean take a photo of the trap itself from a foot away or five feet away. I mean back up and give yourself some perspective as to where you're placing that trap. Give yourself some points of reference, maybe a parking lot or a street sign or you know a mountain or a couple big trees. That way when you go to collect your trap, it's going to be easier to find it in that location. I'm also helping hoping that the orange delta trap will mitigate some of that trap retrieval issue at the end of the season as well. Another thing I wanted to talk about today is the technique for actually placing a trap in the field. Um, whether it's on a tree, a fence post, any object that you're going to be using in the area where you're trapping. When you're placing a trap on that object, you're not going to want to staple the trap directly to like a tree or a post. You're going to want to use a zip tie or some sort of tie to the branch or item that you're placing the trap on. However, when you do that, you don't want to cinch it down super tight. You want to you leave a little bit of wiggle room because as we know, the winds here can be very severe. And if you attach your trap too tightly, the wind will destroy that trap as they are not designed specifically for the climate in Alaska. The last thing I wanted to talk about today is contact during the season. If you guys have any issues or any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly using my contact information. My desk phone comes straight to my cell 24 hours a day, or you can email me that I check at least once a day during the field season.